Supportive housing in and of itself as a, a model that captures many different things, especially with a housing first approach, has been proven time and time and time again to be an effective end to chronic homelessness. We had a scattered site first supportive housing model that targeted people with the longest histories of homelessness who oftentimes had been kicked out of or dropped out of. We proved that a scattered site model can work where it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 50 percent of the units inside of an otherwise affordable development. To do supportive housing for folks who have a lot of healthcare challenges, you need to have an intensive service model. We're really doing a lot of work with the Center for Medicaid, trying to make it easier to understand how Medicaid, especially with the Affordable Care Act and Medicaid expansion, can be used as a tool to pay for the types of supports that help get people off the street into housing, keep their housing, and, and just do better. I think the most important thing is the philosophy and the approach. Um, are we really doing low barrier, high tolerance, harm reduction, housing first, supportive housing, giving people the supports they need to become good tenants, the opportunities that they need to make other changes in their lives? What we're seeing is communities building stronger homeless management information systems that allow us to do exactly what we were talking about. Who gets in? And, and, and who stays, and are the people who exit, why are they exiting, and what happens to them after the fact. The beauty of the way that uh, an open HMIS system can work is that you can actually track what happens to people over time. One of the new challenges that's out there is that some people in particular who move into a purpose-built or single-site supportive housing facility, people do better. For supportive housing to be effective, the people need to be able to get in who need it the most and we just haven't had the level of bipartisan support this issue used to have to make those investments uh, in HUD programs so that we can invest in communities to make these units happen. You know, this is a really critical moment for the industry. It's been clear in this conference that we're not telling people what supportive housing is anymore. We're not having to make the case for why there needs to be more supportive housing. This is really about can we take this to scale? in such a way that it captures the imagination of just the average citizen that this is a problem that can be solved? Uh, can people actually see a reduction in street homelessness in their community? That it captures the imagination of state policymakers so they make the investments and they change the Medicaid policy so that it supports the work? That it captures the imagination of hospitals and managed care organizations and other big players in the health world? The way that we're going to get Congress to pay attention to this proven cost-effective intervention is when it's not just the homeless advocates and the supportive housing advocates who walk in and educate their congresspeople, but when the healthcare system starts to do the same thing.